Now, the monitor window acts as our TV set, at least our local version of our TV set. If you followed my earlier recommendations, you'll have the output of your camera set up on a TV, so you'll be able to see everything in final resolution there as well. But locally, here on screen, this is where we see and interact with the various video clips and the end edit that's on the timeline. Timeline is the default view. We can see that the timeline button is highlighted here. The numbers that we see here, and even the video we see here, which is a black screen, are all relative to the timeline. The blue value is telling us that we're currently at 3 minutes 41 seconds 8 frames, which happens to be the last frame of our clips that we've automatically brought in. And in fact, we can look over to the right to confirm that because this is the duration of the timeline, 3 minutes 41 seconds 8 frames. So we can tell we're parked on the last frame. If we toggle over to clip, we're not going to see anything because we don't have any clips loaded up. Everything just goes gray. Well, that's easy to remedy. All we have to do is double click on a clip and that adds it to our monitor window. So now we can toggle between viewing an individual clip and viewing the final edit in the timeline just by clicking on these buttons at the top of the screen. So whether we're looking at a clip or at the timeline, the controls down here at the bottom allow us to play back what we're looking at and otherwise navigate through the clip or the sequence. Pushing play once causes it to play. Pushing it again causes it to stop. The little arrows to the left and the right of the play button allow us to advance a single frame at a time to help find that exact frame that you want to hone in on. Now additionally, you can click and drag on the time code, the blue time code here. The fact that it's blue and underlined means that this is scrubbable. So if we click and drag on it, you can see that we can quickly scrub through our clip. And you can tell we're actually moving through our clip as we click and drag because you can see the CTI, the little blue triangle shaped thing here inside this ruler, what looks like this ruler, is moving. That's our current time indicator. That's what CTI means, current time indicator. And that tells us where we are in relationship to the clip. Now between you and me, I find the easiest way to navigate, not to scrub here, and certainly not to take advantage of the shuttle wheel, which I find to be kind of a holdover that really isn't all that precise or useful, but rather to just grab the CTI and drag it around. This is a quick way to jump to exactly the portion of a clip that you need. Now the portion that I'm dragging around in now, this time ruler, is an important concept that applies both here and down in the timeline. The idea is that time is flowing from left to right where the start of our piece is all the way over here on the left hand side and as we play a clip we move through the time from the left to the right. Now you'll notice another important concept here and that is that the time code for this clip is actually relative to the tape from which it came. So we're looking at a clip that hit at about 24 seconds on the original tape. However, the entire clip as we can tell down here on the right is only 13 seconds long. It just so happens that it starts at 18 seconds into the entire tape. So the start point of your time code is not necessarily, and usually is not, going to be zero. Only the first clip would start at zero. Most clips and most frames are going to have a unique time code number based on where they came off of your original tape. Now there's an almost hidden little pop-up here next to the word fit. If we click on this, you'll see that it allows us to choose a bunch of different zoom levels all the way down to 10%, which is not even as big as our thumbnail is up here in our media window, and all the way up to 800%, which basically allows us an enormous zoom in on our scene. Again, not a terribly useful value for our particular screen here. But this is an easy way to navigate to 100% in case you want to see what your actual pixels look like. For our purposes, the best setting is probably the default setting, which is fit.